What's happening, my fellow ghouls and ghoulettes? Welcome to a brand new episode of Chris's Custom Collectibles. And today, it's the one I've been waiting so long to do. Today, we are gonna be pimping out the Trick or Treat Studios Halloween and Michael Myers mask. I'm very excited about this one. It's finally arrived. If you saw my unboxing review and size comparison video, I waited for the longest time for this mask to get here. It was held up in customs for so long, but it's here now and we're gonna be pimping this thing out. So the idea of this custom collectible, and, and if you are new to custom collectibles, welcome. We try to do things on the cheap and not overcomplicate things. Now right off the bat, this mask is fucking beautiful. The stock paint is such a step up from the 2018 masks and the kills mask, and that's not to take away from them. The fact that we're getting castings from production made masters is incredible for the price point too. This retails for $79.99 USD, which I think is a bargain quite frankly. They've upped their paintwork. There's mold effects on the burn side and sporadically throughout the hair. They've even updated the hair application. So much so, we're actually gonna be utilizing the stock paint job, doing some dry brushing. We're then gonna go in, do some highlights with some oil colors and also the mold application. But we're also gonna be keeping the stock hair. But just for safety, I am gonna be taking off the front hairline, but towards the end, we're gonna reattach it and blend it all back in. So perfect segue, the first step is we are gonna carefully remove the front hairline. So I've Given it a little bit of a start, and it comes off pretty easy by hand, but there are some parts that get a bit stubborn, so we can always use some lacquer thinner for that. Once the hairline's off, I'm then gonna remove all of this fake mold here, because then it just gives us a nice, clean slate. Really excited about this one, ghouls and ghoulettes. So with that being said, let's get to it. So again, you really wanna take your time taking the hairline off. Again, some of it, for the most part, does come off by hand. Keeping in mind, you also gotta make sure that the front is also sometimes attached to the back, so you don't wanna over rip it. You kinda just wanna do it in little increments, bit by bit, and just make sure that it's all gonna come off in one piece, because it's just gonna make reapplying everything a lot more easier. So you see we've got the back here, so we just carefully remove that. So the good thing is there's also sort of like a guideline in the sculpt, so when we go to reapply it, we're not exactly gonna be uh, applying it too much lower, too much higher. So this all lifted off by hand. Again, you can always use lacquer thinner with a brush if it gets a bit stubborn, but try to make sure you don't use too much of the lacquer thinner, especially on the entire mask, because this will be your end result. All right, so for the most part, the hairline came off in one chunk all along here, but this has remained. I'm kind of just gonna keep it and keep it at bay here. So when we go to reapply it, just bring it back down and then we can start futzing with it. But now we're just gonna do a little bit of general cleanup with some wispy bits of hair at the back before we remove the mold. So I've just got some 120 grit sandpaper and like I did with the Kills mask, just get rid of those stubborn hairs that are stuck down here with the glue and they lift off pretty easy, you can scuff them up. Again, this isn't a big deal, but also it's just gonna help when we go in to do our dry brushing and detailing and stuff like that. You kinda don't want these things lying around and getting all caked up. So we've even got some wispy hairs just like around the ear here, even though you're not gonna see them by the time it's all done. It just helps, and just helps to have that nice blank slate slash blank canvas when we're ready to do our washes and paints, etc. All right, we're gonna remove all this mold here. So I'm just gonna grab some isopropyl alcohol in a spray bottle as well as a scour sponge or a Brillo pad. I'm pretty sure what everyone in America calls it. So it's gonna give it a spritz, let it kind of soak in, grab the scour sponge, and it'll kind of ball up, group together, and just come right off, you see right there. Now some parts you will have to kind of peel away because there is like a rubber coating that's, uh, that's added to it. But for the most part, it comes off pretty easily. Alrighty, we're ready to mix up our wash that we're gonna be applying to the surface of the mask. So I'm gonna be grabbing some brown kiwi shoe polish and some raw umber acrylic paints. We're going for kind of a mud look. You don't wanna do you know, a stark black, like a jet black as your base wash. You want something that's kind of like an off mud type thing. And there's no, it's just a matter of eyeballing this, so to speak. And then we can thin it down with a bit of water. But when it comes to this, it's very touch and go. And also it's, it's subjective, you know, it's preference. If you want it darker, then absolutely go for it. But we do need sort of like a dark mud brown. And just a little touch of water just to thin it out ever so slightly. That looks pretty good to me, pretty happy with that. Okay, I've just got the back of the hair all pinned up with several bobby pins just to keep it out of the way because we are gonna be covering this area with our concoction. Now I've gone ahead and just done a test here, pretty happy with how this looks. So with that being said, we're gonna coat this entire area with our mix of brown shoe polish and brown acrylic paint. So you just wanna take your time with it, like you don't wanna rush it so certain areas don't cake up and glug up and try and get even coverage.
Okay, we are now ready to start dry brushing. Now, I've just done a test on this area just to make sure it looks good. It's that kind of perfect off-white that I'm going for. So, the paint we're actually gonna be using, we don't need to mix anything up. It's actually an airbrush paint that we're gonna be applying by hand. This is MIG Acrylic Color. This is RAL 9001 Cream Weiss, I think it is. So, originally, yeah, this is designed for airbrushing. It's got a little silver ball in there to mix it up, but we're gonna be applying it with one of these brushes. So it like borders on a makeup brush, but it just has that perfect amount of soft bristles that it doesn't want to go into the deep crevices. So this is going to be our first pass, see how it looks. And then we may have to build up the white in certain areas, especially when it comes to like the nose and around the cheeks, there are some stark white areas where there's no real cracks, but obviously we've got the trademark cracks here, here running along the eyes. Now, I did experiment with some oil colors here before we dry brush, like some uh, olive green oil colors to emulate the mold. I do like them, but I think it's something we can tackle later on. Again, I just want to do this first pass of the white dry brushing, see where we're at, and then we can go from there. All right, let's give this area a crack. Literally, get it? All right, that's looking pretty good. Again, really take your time when it comes to the dry brushing ghouls and ghoulettes because it can either make or break the next step uh, with rehauling these masks. Like, look at all that beautiful detail. It's crazy how clean and crisp these masks are. So overall, this took a good couple of passes. Now, for the most part, I did cover uh, the unburnt side with a lot of white, but we still need that dark wash bleeding through on the burnt side. But now we've got to seal this layer up. And I'm just going to be using some clear Plasti Dip. This is a, a latex rubber-based uh, clear sealer, and that is going to lock in this base color because the next step is we're going to do some washes so we can start to detail all these beautiful cracks on this side and whatnot. And then we can go in to doing the overall color with more washes you know, kind of get that nice off-white eggshell white happening as well as like greens, browns, and then start doing all our beautiful highlights on the lips and stuff like that. All right, now that the Plasti Dip is dry, we're gonna go in and start to stain and re-detail the mask. So it's very layered with a, a mask like this, Ghouls and Ghoulettes. We need that kind of dark wash bleeding through the white here, but now we've gotta go back in and pick up all that beautiful detail. So I've got a little bit of black shoe polish and a little bit of brown shoe polish watered down. So literally it comes up to about there. I'm just using this bottle because it was pretty much empty. So I'm gonna brush some on like so, especially where all the cracks are. This is the idea is just to pick up all that beautiful detail of the actual cracks in this sculpt. So you really want to do it bit by bit. That's the best way, I think, to do it. Not all in one hit, because some parts will definitely want to dry. But we're gonna grab some baby wipes and wipe away the excess like so. So we'll go up to here where these forehead cracks are. Again, grab our baby wipes and wipe away that excess. Okay, now that the wash is done, I'm just gonna grab that airbrush off white that we used in the beginning to go back over certain areas to build them up to a full white, especially areas on the cheeks, the forehead. Uh, we've got the nose area here, the chin and stuff like that, but we also wanna leave these cracks bare because they also are gonna act as reference when we go back in and do our highlights on the cracks. So once this stage is done, I'm gonna seal this again with some more Plasti Dip just to seal in this layer. Overall, really happy with how this is turning out. It's very touch and go with masks like this, Ghouls and Ghoulets, but you can really have a lot of fun with them, but also just making sure to build up those stark white areas. 
and there goes my brush. Okay, next up I've just grabbed myself a Liquitex Turner's Yellow and a Raw Umber Acrylic Paint. So mixing these two together and just making an off yellow, off brown kind of color with a little bit of water mixed in. So we're gonna be covering the entire mask with this and dabbing away the excess right away. And by doing that, we're just gonna start the detailing process and that base coat of like that, that soiled, rotted look on the latex. See, we just get that nice kind of yellowish brown hue going on. All right, next up, I'm gonna grab some isopropyl alcohol and just spray it on random parts of the mask. I've got a little Brillo pad here and I'm just gonna dial back that yellow on certain highlighted areas just to get back to that nice white again, but also just retaining that soiled yellow around certain parts of the mask. And this just highlights everything and just makes everything really stand out instead of just being yellow all over. Because some areas, some high areas, like the cheeks around here, up on the temple, are sort of back to that stark white. And this is where you really see the mask come to life, ghouls and ghoulettes, in my opinion. And then we can start to go in and do all the cracks and then the highlights and stuff like that. See, like that, just have everything kind of just naturally blend out. Yeah, I'm really digging that. That looks great. Like you really do want to leave the yellow on the neck because it is quite yellowed and dark and we will darken this area here with some oil colors. So now it's time to go in and do the details and highlights and all that jazz. So we're gonna be highlighting these cracks a little bit more. So I've just got some black artist oil just on a piece of paper here. Now I've got a very fine brush because again, it, it's just more about subtlety with this type of thing. You don't really wanna go in and go full ham with, with the darker colors, but also you want those beautiful cracks highlighted. And again, just very finely, just gonna drag the brush over all that detail and that's just going to highlight it now it is very touch and go now this does take a little while to do but trust me when it's all said and done these details absolutely pop you can even highlight the eyebrow there keep in mind this area here is going to be almost like an off reddish brown as well as the hairline to emulate dry blood Now, whilst we're here, we can go in with that same black oil color and just start to subtly highlight the lips there. Again, just less is more when it comes to oil color ghouls and ghoulettes. And once it's dried, it's on there like shit to a blanket. It's great. And also some highlighting on the chin here with that kind of half circle here. Now I've also just got a raw umber oil color and this is mainly for the eyes, like the soiling around the eyes, especially the, uh, the crispy part. But again, it is personal preference. Some people like extra soiling, others like more of the white slash yellow look, but overall I just want this thing looking absolutely disgusting and gnarly, but I'm so happy with how this is turning out so far, ghouls and ghoulettes. Now I'm also gonna take that black oil color and just do highlights around certain parts of the burn side. So the color has shifted quite a bit uh, from the kills mask to this one. It's as if, and I know it sounds very silly, the, per the burns have sort of healed in a way, but yeah, the color is very different to what it was in Kills. It's a lot more subdued, but 
we do want to highlight certain areas and you just get real fun and creative with this. So after this side's done, we're going to go in and start to darken around the neck here and really soil this up. Then what I'm thinking is we can start to do the dried blood here, here and possibly where the hairline is going to sit. So when it comes to the dried blood, I've got a cadmium red and I've also got a burnt umber. Now I'm going to mix those two together because again, it's not a red red, but it's a dried blood red. So it has like hints of brown in it till we reach that happy medium and getting there, getting there, mm, bit more brown, little bit more brown. That looks pretty good to me. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. First up, we're going to do the gun wound. Just try and make it look as natural as possible. So we've got a bit of splatter up here and kind of blending it down here. So where the blood has leaked out, but it's obviously dried over the four year period. Looks pretty good. A bit trailing up there. And I've also got this little part of the temple here. I always love this little detail here. I don't know why. It's kind of just satisfying to look at. Almost looks like a duck. There's his tail and there's his little beak. Now before we move on to adding the mold and reapplying the hairline, we're going to do the dry blood simulation that's going to be soaking through the hairline. So I'm going to follow it just down like so. And once the hairline's on, it'll just all kind of marry up. So if I remove one of these bobby pins, the hairline's going to come down around there. So have a trail up as much as we can up into the scalp. Okay, when it comes to the mold, very simple, very straightforward. So I've gone ahead and got a little example here on the temple crack. So what we're gonna do is get a paper cup that's had the top cut off and I've got some spray adhesive, some 3M Super 77 spray adhesive. We're gonna spray some in this cup. Now for the actual mold, we're just gonna be using cotton buds, but you want to separate them a bit because they are bunched together pretty tightly, but by having it separate, it's just going to make for easier application. Now you can use a brush if you want, but your brush is probably going to cark it by the end of it. So I'm just using Q-tips and just running it along that opening on the mask like that. Now do wear gloves because it is going to get very messy, very sticky, and we're just going to dab it on like so and rip away some of that excess and trying to get it to stem across to the other side. There we go, look at that. Nice and simple. Oh, we're gonna get rid of that big gloop. But you can see right there, it just looks nice, natural, and like growing mold on the mask. So I'm gonna repeat this step in sporadic areas, especially on the burnt side. Like I know these holes here, these burnout holes do have a lot of mold. There's mold along the neck, and of course we've got some up along the hairline, and as well as the gunshot hole. So here's an alternative for applying the mold. So I've gone ahead and used this as an example, but I'm gonna just do a little bit more here. So you can dab on the cotton without removing the excess like so, and then you can just wait until it's fully dried, and then you can pick away the excess if that makes sense. There we go, now that it's a lot more dry, we can also just stipple it down a little bit, and that looks a lot more natural. Alrighty, I am done and dusted, back from Canada, and you know what? It worked out so damn well. Obviously, you guys saw that I had to put this on hiatus whilst I went away, came back, and whilst I was waiting at Vancouver Airport, Christopher Nelson dropped photos of the Hero Mask 
from Halloween ends. So I have the best reference to go off now. So before we move any further, we are going to apply some more mold because looking at those new photos, there's a lot of mold on this side, on the ear, on the hairline. So we're gonna have to apply the hairline before we go any further with the mold. We've also got some black speckles and spots to add and stuff like that, some green areas, but overall, these photos are incredible. And it just goes to show how intricate the details are on the hero mask. So I've got the hairline here that's gonna cover here and all the way down on the left hand side. Now I've got remnants of the hairline here that didn't exactly come off but just hovered around and pinned them back. So I'm just gonna bring them forward and glue them down. Just gonna use some cheap and nasty super glue and then we can use the exact same method we used for the mold here on the rest of the mask. Now, looking at those photos again, there is a lot of mold on this side but there's a lot of mold on the ear. So actually, let me backtrack. We're gonna glue the hairline back in place I'm then gonna style the hair using some water and some spray gel. Then we can move on to the mold and just finishing up little details, highlights here and there, and then we can call it a day. Okay, let's just get the proportions right here with the hairline, so if that goes down like that. Here's one of the beautiful reference photos I'm using just for the hairline, just to make sure I get it in that sweet spot. Okay, just tack that down there. Now I'm just using some silicon here, and that way it doesn't stick to your fingers, and it just doesn't get messy that way, because nothing wants to stick to silicon but silicon. Okay, main part of the hairline. Okay, this is where it's gonna to start to get really fiddly. So we've got all this cake together hair that came with the stock mask. So essentially we've just gotta go through and separate it as best as we can because overall that's gonna help with styling the hair, especially with matting it forward. Like these little matted parts here, there's all little like tangled curlies uh, that I've noticed on the hero. So just by trying to separate as much of the hair as possible because it's been sprayed with some sort of adhesive and it's made to look caked together, which is great, but also we just need it a bit more flexible if that makes sense. Keeping in mind also, that this side is really caked down on the hero and we do have to go in and add more mold and kind of blend the mold on the hair into the surface of the actual mask. All right, here comes the fun part. We're essentially gonna sculpt this hair into just a matted, disgusting mess, especially on this side and on the hairline. But mostly on this side, we gotta flatten it as much as we can. So I'm gonna go back in uh, with a lighter just to do some more burning to kind of marry up how this looks uh, to here, keeping in mind we're gonna be adding a lot more mold all over here as well as along the hairline here. But I'm just gonna be using a VO5 extra hold. So this is the good shit ghouls and ghoulettes. So really cake it on, like soak it, and then you can just start to go to town doing your thing. All those curly whirlies down. And then for this side, I'll kind of lift this flap up. Smush it down as hard as I can. Cause yeah, from what I've seen with the hero photos that Christopher Nelson posted, this is just like almost bald flat and it's just caked with mold. Like the melted hair is just kind of just flattened down and the mold just started to take shape. Get it? Alrighty, next up, we're gonna use a bit of heat on this side. It's just gonna help kind of melt everything and flatten everything because I do wanna get this just a little bit more flat just so this side really poofs up a bit. So I've just got myself a little torch here. So you just crank it on like so. So, can, so we'll control the heat and dial it down just a little lower. That's better. Get that fire out. Also just some little wisps on the side here. Now one thing that can happen with this singed hair, if we don't put a protective coating on it, it's gonna crumble very easily. And vice versa for the burnt side slash moldy side. So again, we're just gonna grab that clear plasti dip and seal it up and that way it's not gonna crumble if we handle the mask. And also it's just gonna maintain that nice, just matted, chunky, knotty gnarliness. 
Like really get it on in there and then that way it's just gonna seal it and also keep the hairstyle as is. So the exact same steps that we used on the mold here, but I'm gonna be using a brush this time to apply the contact adhesive. Just really cake it on around here, just along the hairline, on the forehead here, especially along the temple here. And there is quite a bit of mold buildup on the ear here from those beautiful new photos that Christopher Nelson has released. So any other things that I think need tidying up, maybe adding a bit more of the, uh, the brown red here, I'll go ahead and do. But for the most part, marrying up all the mold is the final step. And just like what we originally did, we're just gonna remove any excess with our fingers like so. Again, just till we reach that happy medium, you can also just blend them back into the mask, but that looks pretty moldy and disgusting to me. And vice versa with this side, obviously it's looking a bit too fluffy, but we'll just get rid of these, dumb them down. Now I'm just gonna do some finishing touches on the mold and also the hairline. I'm gonna go back in and redo that dried blood area, but to cover the mold and just keep it a little bit more subtle so it's not a stark white, I've just got myself an olive green oil color. I'm just gonna go over certain parts of the mold just to really make it look that extra bit disgusting and just a little bit more mossy if that makes sense. But just kind of breaks up the monotony of all the cotton just being white. Just adds to the gross factor. Okay, this is the last step, I swear. From what I can see, there are like tiny little speckle dots, like almost black speckle dots on random parts of the mask, especially on this side here. So I've just got a Q-tip, again, with some black artist oil, just sporadically putting them on this side of the mask. And if you feel it gets a bit too heavy, just wipe it away. But just randomly doing little speckles everywhere. And then we can call it a day, ghouls and ghoulettes. And there we have it, ghouls and ghouls. That's the Trick or Treat Studios Halloween Ends Michael Myers mask makeover is done and dusted. I'm really happy with how this has turned out, considering we've done it on the cheap with acrylics, artist oils. Probably the most expensive part usually are oil colors, but they last a very long time. And the fact that we were able to utilize the hair and the stock paint just takes this custom collectible up a couple of notches. Now keep in mind when it came to the dry brushing, it's totally subjective, whereas I went really heavy on this side. Originally I was just gonna dry brush, let the cracks do their thing, but I figured cover everything, but still have a bit of the base wash bleeding through. So guys, I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you learned something. And with that being said, wherever you are in the world, please have yourselves an absolute cracker of a day. I hope you will. Hope you're happy. Be merry, be silly. And until next time, ghouls and ghoulettes, please always remember, cosplayers do it best.